Hey guys, this is Mr. Nightmare here, and I'm sorry I was unable to post any new videos for the past couple of days since I've been busy with work and juggling college classes all over again. Before we get started, we'll be reading Chapter 2 of Forever Yours, A Cinderman's Love Story. Before we get started, please hit that like button, comment, subscribe to this channel if you guys want more creepypasta fanfictions out there. Until then, let's get started. I could feel Ash's gaze on me as I tried to keep focus on my copy of Romeo and Juliet. The other kids were pondering around the room, shutting out the world from centuries ago that they didn't understand or how to pronounce the clashing forms of swords in their hands. Since one ending and the boys were now pretending to pursue each other with the heart, with the fake swords, laughing rambunctiously. The teacher shot them with an amused look. All right, all right, that is enough, she called out to them. She forced the rest of the class to pay attention. Tomorrow, who would like to be my handsome Romeo? She asked in a dramatic voice. Allison saw out of the corner of her eye Ash raised his pale hand into the air and Miss Sandy's eyes lit up as she noticed the volunteer. Perfect, Ash, right? she asked. And who would love to be your Juliet? A devilish grin spread across his face as he glanced over to me as he pointed a long finger at me. She seems perfect for the part, don't you think so, Miss Sandy? He said. The teacher smiled at him. Please, perfect. Allison, tomorrow you'll be Juliet. My eyes widened in shock, and I threw a vicious glare at Ash, who only smiled with a certain malice. The bell rang, signifying the end of the class. I shot out of my seat, swiftly made my way towards the door. I was just outside of the classroom when I heard out or a hand reached out and grabbed my thin shoulder. I spun around and I was greeted by a deep, luminous eyes of the new student, Ash. His mouth tucked into a playful smirk. I stared at him, still slightly shocked by his good looks. What do you want? I forced myself to say, hoping my voice did not quaver enough. Something about him made me uneasy and not in a good way that a tracksman are making me suppose. He looked down at me though, his long fingers, long frank, fragile black eyelashes. I'm new to the school and I don't know where I'm going, he said slowly, drawing out each word. I would, would you be so kind to point me to the direction of my next class? I sighed. I couldn't help even, well, just telling him where to go away and find someone else to ask him. That would be rude. Fine. I said in the nicest voice I could manage. What is your next class? He had me a sheet of paper, nearly the same color as his pale hand that reached out to give it to me. I studied his class schedule for the moment and looking at his second period slot. You have Mr. Henderson for PM American Studies in classroom 302. That's where I'm going. I added as an afterthought. His grin grew showing off a perfect square of white teeth then, can you walk me to my classroom all right? I looked around, trying to figure out a way to get out of the situation, seeing no way. I reluctantly agreed to it, saying that I needed to stop by my locker and exchange my books. With what good harm could be walking Ash to a classroom, they both shared. 
They walked up to the slightest stairs to the third floor. So, my dear Juliet, Ash said after a few moments of awkward silence, I hope you're good at acting, or at least reading the proper pronouncing of the words correctly. I couldn't stand those god-awful kids Miss Sandy had playing the parts today. It was so unclear, he grimaced, as though the memory actually pained him to some degree. I looked at him sideways. I'm pretty good at pronunciation, she informed him. Good, Ash said looking forward. After a while, he said, you know, it's a kissing scene tomorrow. I nearly stopped in my track. We can actually kiss in class, I told him, bewildered. A mischievous grim was now back on his face. We can do whatever we want. He seemed to consider his own words for a moment, but you don't seem to be the type to color outside the lines. How does it work out for you? Sarcasm thick coating his husky voice. I glared at him through my eyelashes. Maybe I didn't take making risk, but I like to read and write, but people who who did, maybe sometimes supernatural or dangerous with a di dash of sexy came my way I could color outside the lines I was hoping for something like this since I was 12 thus it did not happen despite me wanting it to be like the characters I wrote but sadly it was never meant to work out that way I stuck up my nose in the air at his com comment, gesting her chin out. I get along quite fine. Thank you very much for asking. They reached AP American Studies door, and I stalked my way inside as Ash whispered behind me in a same sarcastic voice that I heard him that I really, really hate at this moment. Ladies first. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. I'm glad. If you want more Ben John love stories, check out the playlist that will be popping up soon. Also, if you want any more fan fictions narrations, please check out my other channel, Reading with Blade, which has multiple fan fictions up, up already. If you are interested in the Yaoi experience, check out Tyler O'Connell's channel if you want to go there. But note that channel is only 18 and up. I've been listening to Tyler's stories and I'm addicted to them. Until then, bye guys!